All right, so welcome back to the part number two. And uh, this is going to be about the sequencer only and some other features as well, but mainly the sequencer. I've already recorded uh, kind of a, the video or maybe volume or guide number two, whatever you want to call it. And I'm going to give you the link on the description or you are going to get it in a cart right there at the top. So if you need to learn how the synth works, you need to go to that one. On this one, we're going to learn to work uh, with the sequencer. All of the guys are going to be uh, divided into different sections. So you have a time codes. Notice at the bottom that everything is just going to be split on different sections. And if not, you can go to the bottom on the description to the description and you can find the categories right there. Okay, so the most, uh, the easiest way to record a sequence is going to be on stop. You know, it's going to be step recording and not going to be uh, while you're playing it. So for now, I'm just going to make sure we all start on a default patch. I'm going to make sure that you're in poly and I'm going to go one lower so I can get something lower. If not, it's just going to be super high and a little, a little bit too annoying. So, okay, so how can we, you know, start recording? So, okay, so first of all, when you record something and you need to make sure that you are pulling this one because this will kind of a change and we can kind of make combinations. We're going to talk about that later. So how do we record? So right now we have nothing. If I do play, it's just going to start going. So remember, you can do only 16 steps. All right. So once you do a rec, it's going to put you, since we have nothing, on the step number one. So this is a waiting for you to kind of play something. And whenever you play a key, that key is going to be kind of assigned to the step number one. And it's going to move to the next one and to the next one until you record the uh, 16 step sequence. So I'm going to do a one, three, five, five, right? Something kind of a simple, just a, you know, one, three, five, five, one, three, five, five. And I'm doing that so you can, you know, everyone can do this and you can do it at home. Now, when, once I do play, we just get it, right? Now, of course, the amp of whatever you have right here will affect how this sounds. If I go to sustain down and I affect the decay, that's just going to affect it. Just, you know, like it always do. So I'm going to go back to what we have before. Now, of course, right now it's just going uh, at speed. And this depends on what you have uh, on your synthesizer, uh, you know, how you're syncing it. You know, maybe uh, the internal clock is what you're using or maybe you're using, uh, you know, you're syncing this with the DAW. So uh, the uh, clock is going to be a little bit different. So, of course, if I do some playing, you can go slower by changing the tempo or you're just going to go much faster, right? Makes sense. All right. Pretty simple. So let's say that you are not happy with this and you want to get rid of this. So, okay, so why uh, going to shift play, you know, you press and you hold and then you do a rest is going to sequence clear, just going to clear the sequence. And maybe just maybe you may you made a mistake and you want to recover this, recover this. If you didn't record anything else, you can do shift and reset again and rest again. Sorry, it's the rest and it's going to recover the sequence. Right, so pretty simple. Now, in this case, I just don't like it. I can gonna go and delete it again, and I'm gonna be kind of a recording this again. So again, notice that we have nothing. We're gonna go to do the same thing. One, three, five, five. One, three, five, five. And again, I'm gonna be made a mistake right there. We're gonna see how it sounds. Ha! <laughs> That's fine. So right now, we have 16 steps. Now, of course, you can go to the edit mode and you can kind of start changing how this will kind of work. So if you go to the sequence edit, you have the options right here. You have the BPM, of course, uh, you have the ARP parameters or parameters or whatever you want to call it. And then you have the sequence parameters. So in this case, the length is going to be 16. You can change this instead of having 16 steps. Remember, I made a mistake and we are kind of doing the same thing on, you know, every four steps. So maybe I'm just going to go and fix my mistake by going uh, to step length number uh, four, and now it's going to be using just four. If I do exit, notice that we only get four. And of course, you can just change it to whatever you want right here. It doesn't matter. It's completely up to you. You can do eight, and only you can do just 16. Right. So pretty simple. Now then, of course, you have some other options. The next one is going to be the step resolution. And on this one, what it will do, and notice we have a uh, 16 steps. So it's going to be 116 when you, you know, on a default patch. Pretty simple. So if you play, the resolution is just going to change this. And notice, of course, this is going to go at a different rate. 
And what you can do right here later, we're gonna learn about this. You can use some of the features that we get on the synth on the uh, voice mode and take advantage of this. Because we can go slower and maybe play different, you know, many, many times. Or maybe you can use an ARP on a step and we're gonna have, uh, you know, just maybe an ARP on one single step. So you can use the resolution to our, our advantage or maybe just, maybe just make longer sequences. Right, if you go to 16, that's gonna be like the default. So if again, I go right here and I go to the next one, you are gonna have some swing. So you can do swing. So if I go up, you get that kind of a swing vibe. And you can go really aggressive on this one. It makes no sense. But if, you know, maybe you go kind of out there, you get that, you know, that swing sound. In this case, I'm just gonna go all the way down. Oh, you can do, of course, negatives. Just pretty much the same in this case. Okay, of course, you are kind of offsetting some values, so that's why you can go to negatives. If I go to the next one, uh, right now we're gonna see, we're gonna get the default gate time. And this one is kind of, a uh, you know, important. So by default, when you record something, the default gate time is gonna be 75%. So this means that, of course, when you record it, everything is 75%. Now, this doesn't mean that you cannot change it. By default, the global one is going to be 75 for all the different steps. But whenever you can, uh, whenever you are creating the steps, uh, you know, the sequence, you can just change the gate or maybe, maybe just start again. And for now, I'm just going to kind of clear everything. I'm going to go back here and just going to say in this case that my default gate time is just going to be a lot less, like super short, right? So all these steps are gonna be super short. I'm gonna go to exit and I'm gonna record again, do the same thing, 13555. All right, and everything's good, done. And notice that everything's like super short. Now then later, of course, you can go step by step and start, you know, kind of a changing the default values. Uh, but right now, you know, you can go to globals and kind of a change the default gate time. Okay, so let's go to a default patch and I'm gonna, we're gonna talk about editing steps and doing ties and I'm gonna go to a lower octave. So, okay, so this is pretty simple. Again, we want to record again and I'm gonna do my 1355 and one more. All right, so we have, you know, the same thing we did before. Pretty dumb. All right, so as soon as I uh, play, I stop it. What you can do, you can make changes while, you know, just kind of a storing the values or maybe you can change the values while holding the steps. So for example, right now we know we have a one, three, five, five on each four, right? So, okay, so let's say I want to turn this into a one, three, uh, five, seven, right? So I'm gonna go right there. This is gonna be the last one. And when I hold this, this is one, three, five, five. This is gonna be my seven. So if I play uh, press and I, I'm, I, you know, I need to hold, press and hold, I'm gonna do this and that's gonna be changed to this key. So if I play something, we get the change. And we can do pretty much the same for all the other ones. I'm gonna stop it, I'm gonna go right there. That one is gonna be a seven, this one is gonna be a seven, and this one is gonna be a seven. And now we get a one, five, seven. So that's how you can make changes to, you know, whatever you recorded. Now, another thing that you can do is when, let's say that you want to change the gate time. Right now, the gate is of course, uh, 75%. Remember what you get on default? So by default, it's 75%. So by pressing and holding, if you're, you know, don't press anything, you can move the encoder and this is going to change the gate time. So if I go lower and maybe on this, on the first four, we can going notice the difference by a lot. So if I go there and I just do something really low, I'm going to go right there and I'm going to do some playing. And notice that the first four are just going to be super short. Right, pretty simple. Now, of course, you can go the other way. I'm gonna go to the first one and I'm gonna move, make it again, maybe kind of a default value, something 70-ish, something like that. And I'm gonna go to the second one and I'm gonna go to the fifth uh, or the fourth in this case. And I'm just gonna kind of make it like that, 70 something. But this time I'm gonna go to the third one and on the third one, I'm gonna go all the way. And when you go all the way, it's gonna say tie. So what you can do, you can tie notes. So uh, you can tie steps. So this one, what we'll do, it will not re-trigger the envelope on the next one. So when the next one plays, the envelope will not re-trigger. So you're gonna get a different sound. Now let's see if we can get it. Notice that it sounds different. Now, of course, sometimes it's a little bit difficult to 
identify if it's going super fast. But, but when we go to 3-5, the envelope doesn't re-trigger. That's why we get that kind of a tie. And if I do a little bit of attack, notice it sounds a little bit different. Now this is a little bit more obvious, and I'm kind of a move the, move the thing. Uh, this is a little bit more obvious when you kind of tie notes uh, that have the same values. So right now we have a one, three, five, seven. I'm gonna go right here and I'm gonna make it a five. So now we have on the third and on the on the uh, on the fourth we have the same key, right? We have the five. That is what happens. Since, of course, the envelope is not retriggering the three and the four, it seems like we are tying both steps. And now, of course, this step, the, the this one, this part, it's just going to be a little bit longer because we, we are tying steps that have same value. Since we are playing essentially the same key, the envelope is not retriggering. So, of course, we feel like we are just kind of holding that key for two steps. And that's what we get when you tie steps that with same values. Now, of course, that the, uh, remember that the gate time kind of a matters right here, always. Because if this one is kind of a super short, you're just not going to get the same vibe. If I go to this one and make it like, you know, super short, you're still going to be tying. But it's just, you're not going to get the same thing. Because this one is super short. I'm going to need to make it... I need, I need to make it kind of a, a little bit longer. And in this case, I'm doing a tie. And that's it, you know, you're gonna get that tie kind of a sound. Now, all of this, if I go to shift and kind of a clear everything, you can do it, you can do this while kind of a, you are kind of a creating. So if I uh, kind of a clear all of this, and we have nothing right now, you can do all of this while you're recording the, st the sequence. If I go to record, we have nothing right now, I'm gonna be playing this key and I'm gonna hold it. So whenever you hold it, it's not going to the next one. So what you can do from here, you can change the gate time as you, of course, record the steps. And when you release it, then it's gonna go to step two until you make the changes right here. Maybe this is gonna be a tie. Uh, maybe I'm gonna go to the same thing. This is gonna be a tie. I'm gonna go to this one and this one. I don't know, it's gonna be a tie. And you know, just like doing that, you just can keep moving forward and record your sequence. And then, you, of course, you can hear the changes. So you can do this, do this while you're recording. Now you don't need to record everything and then you know start changing this. So when you have the your sequence kind of ready, let's say, and you do the play, notice that these buttons, of course, are kind of a we can turn them on, off. And right now we have this rest. So you have two functions mainly, you two main functions with this rest. If I do play and I play rest, it's gonna mute the whole thing. And as soon as I release it, it's gonna go back. And you can, you know, just tap and hold and maybe tap it and it's just going to silence that step or the whole thing. Just like a mute. Now, of course, what you can do, and kind of in the same realm, you can go right here and just turn off steps. And this is still going through the sequence of step, but right now this one is a rest. It has nothing, so we are going to be getting some kind of a silence. So this doesn't mean that you cannot do this while you are creating this. So we do the same thing. We are going to go to rec. Of course, we can do this. We can check check the, the gate right there. And when it's time to record the next one, maybe this one is going to be a rest. So maybe I don't want to record a key. You know, how, what, what do I do? Because if we wanted to kind of uh, create a rest, I'm going to need to record something and then go to that one and disable this. What you know what you can do, you can go right here and press and, and press the rest and it's just going to move on to the next one. So this one is going to be a rest. And this one I'm going to do something, this one is going to be a rest. This one I can do something else and then a rest. And we're going to be able to hear this. And notice that we recorded all the rests. Right. So pretty, pretty simple to use on the kind of a, the reg mode, not on the play mode. Play mode is just a little bit different. Now, when you, and I'm going to go back again to the same thing, and I'm going to record my 1355, 1355, and the same thing. And of course, right now we have this. Now, this, when you record something, and this is kind of the advantage of, uh, you know, recording the whole thing and then adding rests, is that when you record something, of course, you can go right here and disable as many steps or just, you know, rests, convert them to rests, 
as much as you want, but this doesn't mean that you're gonna lose whatever value you recorded right here. You're just gonna get it back by doing, you know, bring, bring the values back. If you recorded a rest, then what you will need to do if you want to add something, you're gonna need to go to that step and play, play a key to record something. All right, so you know, pretty simple. We just go to record, we save or we uh, kind of uh, store whatever we want on the 16 steps, and then we can just tie them, we can change the gate, we can add the rests, and you know, it's a pretty simple kind of a sequencer so far. Now, of course, you have more things and we're gonna talk about them right now. Okay, so I'm gonna go to a default patch. So we all start from the same spot. I'm gonna go right there, one lower, you know, one octave lower. So right now, of course, uh, we just covered the kind of the most basic usage of this. Now you can do a lot more things. Now don't forget that this one is a polyphonic synthesizer. You have four different voices and you can play four keys at the same time. So right now we are just storing one key on each step, but you can record more. Let's say I want to do the same thing. We're gonna start the same way. One, three, five, and I'm gonna do a chord. And that's going to be stored. You can, of course, record up to four different keys. And, and that's going to be, that's going to be stored. Now, everything kind of sucks with that reverb. Let me just add a little bit of reverb. And yeah, you can do that. Of course, you can go to other steps and maybe just, you know, maybe make a fifth or maybe make a seventh or just change whatever chord and you're just gonna be getting kind of a different different sounds because you're just alternating between one key and maybe many keys. And you can even maybe go to unison if you're just maybe playing one key in this case and just shift the voices and everything is just gonna be on unison. You can just change to chord mode and whenever you play a key, everything's just gonna be a chord. Now, in this case, if you if I play it, we just get the same thing, right? So, right now we are in play, we are not on rec. If I play something at the top, notice that we are getting it. So, we can just play at the top. But maybe, what I want to do, I just want to transpose all of this. So, what should we do? Should we record the whole thing? Of course, no. Uh, of course not. If you go to shift and I do play it, notice it says key trigger on. So this means that if you're playing C, for example, I'm gonna go right there and it's gonna just transpose everything. Now I'm gonna be, I'm gonna go one higher. And every, and notice that we are on C. So if I go to a different key, it's gonna be transposing it. So you can enable the key trigger. Now, the only thing, notice that when you do this, is going to, uh, the play, it's just gonna start blinking. So, uh, you know, you're not gonna be playing the whole sequence. You need to, to play something in order to get something out of the sequencer, you know, to get the sequencers to start playing. And uh, of course, by default, when you play a key, this is just gonna start the sequence from the beginning. Right? So you need to, of course, make sure or just notice that. And whenever you do shift or maybe you just can go to play and go right there and you do play, it's just going to start playing whatever you have on the sequence. All right, so I'm just going to clear the sequence. I'm going to do sequence clear. And right now we've been using the rec kind of a function uh, to record the sequence. Now you could do this while live. So let's say I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to rec and right now we have nothing. So I'm gonna do all C's. I'm gonna go right here and it's just gonna be a little bit different for me, uh, difficult because the camera is right here. I have a light right about here and another light right here and the microphone is right here. So I'm just kind of on a weird spot right now. Just gonna be a little, a little bit difficult to play. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do rec and I'm gonna, do, I'm gonna try to do something simple. I'm gonna do all C's. Right, so pretty simple. I'm gonna go maybe a little bit down to that and a little bit down to the mix. So if I do play, let me do, oh, that, there we go. So we can see, right? And we always get the same thing and that's fine. But maybe I just want to do different thing. I want to do something else. Now you don't need to stop it and then maybe record it. Now, of course, if you want something kind of a, a little bit more uh, in the pocket, you know, you make sure that whatever you record stays like that. You are going to need to go and stop and go to rec mode and then go to edit. But while playing, you can press the rec and you can do changes on the fly. 
Keine Moment. Right? And <laughs> we're just gonna be changing whatever is that you're doing. Just like that, you can create, you know, different different types of sounds while you're doing rec. Now, of course, right now we just have that fundamental C going at the back, so it's just a little bit easier to play uh, on top. Now, what you can do, you can go to edit mode, and on the uh, sequence, uh, it will be on the sequence. I'm gonna don't remember right now. Uh, no, it's not gonna be on the sequence. It's gonna be on the global edit. Let me find it first. All right, so it's gonna be on the global edit. If you go to the second option right there. Notice that you get the metronome, so by default it's off. So if I turn it to on, and then I just kind of start doing the same thing. Of course, of course we, we just get the same thing, but when I do re rec, notice that I get the metronome at the back. Right, so you can use the metronome just to kind of guide you through whatever it is that you're playing. And remember that you can go to do the play and the, the you know, the key trigger. Right, so just pretty, pretty easy to use. So there's something called the shift function. And this is something very, very simple. Uh, this doesn't work like uh, by default when you get it from factory, you're gonna need to enable uh, because by default, the shift function works for favorites. But you can just change the function in that one and use this kind of a shift function for the step sequencer. What you will need to do is you need to go right here to global edit and you need to go to the step number eight. And if you toggle to the second one, the third one, the uh, you know, then it's the fourth, and then it's going to be uh, the, uh, the five. Oh, and I get the active uh, step right now. By default, it's going to be favorites. Now, the shift function, the active step, what it will do, it will deactivate the step. All right, so right now, you need to make sure you select active step. So I'm going to exit, and remember that we do have something, right? We have something going on. So now when we do shift, and we kind of a type, or just kind of a enable, or just press on a, on a step, that one is going to be uh, skipped. Now, you maybe you're thinking, okay, isn't that what rest is doing? Not really, because we, when we go to rest, and you know, let me just do it right now. When I just tap it like this, this is going to this, and it's kind of going to this step. The only thing is that we don't hear anything. It's just kind of a muting that step. It's a silence, but the step is still on. Now, if I enable them back on, we are going to be getting them. So the shift function, what it will do, it will just kind of skip whatever step. And instead of going to this one and doing a silence or a rest, it's just going to jump, skip it, and go to the next one. So if I just jump this whole section, notice this one will start playing right here. And instead of going through here, it's just going to jump over here. And I'm going to go do a play. See? So this is what the shift function does. It's just skipping whatever we have right here. And if I do shift again, it will just tell you what you are kind of a skipping. And we are just skipping steps. That's what we are doing. And of course, this will change how everything sounds. Now, of course, by doing shift, you can enable them back on. Right, so, so far, just by knowing what we know, we can just create cold sequences. Maybe going slower. And just, you know, maybe we're gonna need to change a little bit of the sound just to get something else. And for now, I'm just gonna go maybe like there. Maybe we can do something like that. And just trying to get a better sound. Maybe we can go to a little bit of course. I'm just gonna be turning on. And maybe we bring a little bit of delay. And then again, you just... And we did pretty much nothing, right? It's kind of sound cool, sounds cool. So we can... So we get it really easy. Now we can do more with the motion sequence. And here's where well, the kind of uh, the step sequencer starts to kind of uh, shift into something else. Something a little bit more creative. Right, so let's talk about motion sequence. So, uh, motion sequence is something that some uh, synthesizers uh, are, are uh, kind of adopting, and it's a way of uh, kind of creating modulations 
uh, by steps. So notice, again, with everything off right now here, we know that we have some kind of a sequence. And if you go through patches, all the default patches uh, will have information and you can do play and you know, you're gonna get that something, whatever was recorded from factory. But if you create a patch and you save it and then you uh, go to that patch and if you never did something like this, all of this is just gonna be, it's just gonna be like this. It's just gonna be completely off. So it means that you have no step recording. Uh, you have no pattern, you know, sequence. Now, uh, this is gonna be a little bit different for the motion mode. So behind the scenes, the motion sequence, what it will do, you can record up to four different motions and uh, all each motion is gonna be recorded within each step. It's not like something super kind of a linear that you're recording. It's just doing step recording, but recording the motion. Which motion? Well, let's say that you, if you move the filter on this part of the sequence, well, it's just gonna be recording that on the steps. Now, how do you know this? Now, if I go to motion mode and I keep pressing, notice it's gonna say, it's gonna enable this. So this is going to be, be toggling between the sequence or mode and the motion mode. And the motion mode works just like the sequence. If you do something, it's just going to store the values on the 16 steps. So uh, this is kind of a, you know, how it works behind the scenes. Since right now we have no motion data, it's just going to say no motion data, right? Because you have nothing. How can you record some motion? Well, there are many ways. So right now we do have something, right? From the previous section. So what you can do, you can do a rec, and while you're doing play, you just can start moving things, and that is gonna be recorded right here. Notice that this one is just gonna still going and listening to whatever you do. So I'm gonna just gonna go off, and I'm gonna get out of the motion mode. So okay, so what do I want to do? If I go to motion mode, and I do record, it's gonna start recording everything. So if I go and move the filter, Notice it's kind of a recording whatever I did with the filter. And you can do a lot of things. Now, if you do rec again, because maybe you just want to check, change what you did right here, th this one can be changed. And kind of a re-record it. Let's say I want to do something else. Let's say for the oscillator number two or number one, I want to change it to, I don't know, to an octave lower, right? And I'm gonna be recording this. And notice that on that on that part, it's just going to an octave lower, and it's you can see the change right here. So if I go to the second oscillator that we are not using so far, and I go maybe to I don't know something like that. If I do record and I change this, it's gonna recognize it. You can even go right here and change the waveform if I do rec. Notice it's just going through the different waveforms. If I just go all, down, all the way down, we can hear this going through the ranges and just change it to different waveforms. And just by doing this, you can create kind of a really interesting sounds. So let me just stop it. Now, notice that right now, if I'm not on play, we, we can see what we did on play, but if I go to motion mode, all of the steps are gonna be kind of a full. And it's because you have some motion data right here, and you have four, and you can do only four. You just cannot do more. Of course, at this point, you just kind of need to remember what you did, what what you you know what you moved, which uh, uh, parameters or which knobs you changed in order to change them again while you're doing on record on re uh, record mode. Now the thing is that, of course, uh, let's say if I go to play and I do the re record and I go maybe to motion, I want to change this, and you're gonna need to go rec and do it kind of on the fly, and that. It's sometimes a little bit challenging because this is just gonna going and going and it's just gonna last one bar. If I do a record right here, we're gonna do something right here, but the motion, the motion is just gonna last one bar. If I start moving this, notice that if I keep move, keep it moving, it's not recording. So it's just gonna last one bar. So you're gonna need to go record again in order to record your motion sequence or, uh, you know, modulation. 
So again, it's going to be a little bit hard sometimes. So what you can do, you have a way of editing this. And for now, let me just uh, maybe go to the... Uh, uh, I'm going to do play again. But maybe I'm just going to... I'm going to do it on the oscillator number one. I'm just going to go to get that simple sound. And I'm going to go to motion mode. Now remember, everything was recorded in 16 steps. And I, what I want to do, I want to edit the filter. Because I know that that, you know, is a modulation. But I want to do something else. I'm going to stop the playback. And I know that this is step number one. It's going through all the steps, all the sequence, and it, it's going to end right here. So what you can do, you can edit whatever motion sequence you recorded, just like we edit the different steps. You can hold right there and you can start moving and notice that the values are going to start changing on the motion view. You're going to need to take a look at right there. So as soon as I start moving this, you're going to be starting uh, to edit on kind of a step mode. So, of course, uh, you know, this is just going to look a little bit different, but it's a bit more kind of a, you know, you can do a little bit more uh, precise editing. Because you're going to be changing the values on different steps. And right now, I'm just going to do something that we can really hear and we can really see right there. So I'm going to go up and then I'm going to go down again. So you can just go one by one editing like this and you don't have to go to the record. If you already know what you want, you just can do something like this. This is just, it's just gonna work. And you can do the same for pretty much everything. Right. Right now, of course, it's super low. Let me just go a little bit up. Right. Kind of a mess, you know, mess the sound up. So let me just, Record something like that. Okay, yeah, you can go one by one, holding the steps and just changing or editing whatever it is that you need to edit. Now, what happens if you don't like what you have, or maybe you just want to disable something so you can hear what you're doing uh, to one of the motion sequence. So you can go to edit mode, and when you go to the sequence edit, these three buttons are gonna be kind of a dedicated to kind of a work with the motions. So, if you go there, it's going to tell you, dude, on your first one, you have the cutoff. On the second one, you're doing the octave of the one. Then you're doing the two. And then you're changing the way of the number two. So, here's where you can know what you're doing. Because uh, on the other view, you know, if I go right there and go there, I don't know what I'm changing. So, you can go right here and just verify what, uh, you know, what you're doing. So, if you just want to still, you're watching this and you want to see, okay, how much I'm doing a lot of, of the cutoff. If you hold the shift, it's just going to show you the motion view while you're holding shift. If you release it, it's just going to take you back to the motion clear. So the next thing that you have right here is the motion enable. So you can toggle through the different motions and you just can turn them off. Off, it's just going to be off, off, off. And right now we are just back to doing nothing. And again, you can go shift and see what you're doing. But right now all of them are off. So this is the way where you can just turn them on. And then you have something called motion smooth. Okay, so let me just take you to the motion view. So remember what we did earlier, sometimes that uh, when we go to the motion view and we start editing, notice that this is just gonna maybe look a li little bit kind of a not smooth. So behind the scenes, this is just kind of a smoothing whatever changes that you're making this. And when you record it, notice that it's just going to be kind of a, kind of a like that. So when you uh, go to the uh, options right there and you do the edit sequence, notice that it says motion smooth on. Right now, I'm just going to turn them off. I'm just going to go and do some play and go to there. I'm just going to start moving all this. And notice it looks different. And do a record again. Notice that now it's just not super smooth. We are doing kind of the same thing that we are doing when we edit manually. And it's because it's not smoothing by default. So that's where, you know, something that you can decide. You can go to the edit right here and you can disable the motion smooth when you record that one. And for the other one, just it's just going to be the super smooth. Uh, but in this case of this one, I'm just going to leave it on. And uh, then, of course, you know, you just can go to your motion and do whatever it is that you need to do. Right. So there we go. Right. 
So again, you know, it's just pretty, pretty easy to use. And right here is where, again, everything kind of starts to grow because you can do motion sequence. You can do a million things. You can change a lot of things. All right, so I'm going to go back. And some things that, if you think about this, some things uh, that shouldn't be motion sequenced, and if that is a word, uh, you know, shouldn't be, uh, you know, shouldn't be able to change on an analog synthesizer, like changing the waveform or changing the range, kind of a bump the camera right there. So for that, so changing the waveform, changing the, uh, you know, the, maybe the, changing the voice mode and you can change the voice mode and you can even change some of the effects right here. But, you know, not, I'm going to leave it out. But uh, what, I, what I want to show you right now is that you can go and motion sequence this one. Now, of course, right now, if I go to the edit mode, all of the sequences right here are kind of a occupied, right? We have the cutoff, the octave, so we don't have room to do more motion sequence. So maybe I just want to get rid of the cutoff, right? So notice that this one lets you see what you're doing, but it also says motion clear. So if you go maybe to the one and I want to delete this one and I go right here and I just clear, it's, it's gonna ask you, do you want to clear? And I'm gonna do right and it's gonna be clearing that one. So now we have one slot free. And of course, you can do the same thing for the other ones. Go and clear, then go to this one and clear, go to this one and clear. And now we have, we are kind of a back to no motion data, no motion sequence recorded. So we get the default sound, right? Okay, so uh, some things that you can, that shouldn't be motion sequenced can be motion sequenced. And we kind of already did this in the previous example. I'm starting from a default, default patch. Now, what we can do, we can do the octaves or we can do the waveforms. And that's something that shouldn't be motion sequenced. And we can. Now, what you can do as well, you can motion sequence the voice mode. And I'm going to go slow so we can really hear this. So it's going to be like super slow. I'm going to record something and I'm going to do maybe, let me go one octave lower and they're going to be all C's. Just like we did before, right? Pretty simple. So now on this one, uh, what we can do, we can motion sequence the voice mode. So let's say I want to do all C's, but at some point I want to record a motion like, you know, changing to the chord mode. And maybe uh, I'm going to go out on the chord mode. I'm going to go to the chord mode. I'm going to make sure that I have a minor. So every time that we go there, it's going to be a minor, right? So pretty cool. I'm going to be going back to poly. Everything is going to be poly. And now, in this case, what we can do on this step, we can go to motion sequence and add a, add a motion right there. I'm going to be going to this one and I'm going to say that this one is going to be chord. Maybe go to this one. This one is going to be another chord. And this one is going to be another chord. And then it's going to be another chord. So now, every time that we go through these steps, they're going to be changing to the chord. So if I do play, and we can see it on the motion and we can see it moving right here. Again, everything sucks without effects. Right, so pretty simple, right? Now, of course, you can go to through the other other places. So let's say that we want to do make some changes, right? We are doing the court, but maybe I just want to make a real court. And that court, I want to do something else because we can do ARP. So if I maybe go and edit some of the steps, I don't know. Uh, I'm going to be editing this once. We have the uh, the last steps on each. So I'm going to do the first. I don't know, just to do something. Uh, I'm going to go right there. And I'm going to do this one. This one, it's now going to be a court. Since we are doing minor, we're just going to do a minor. Right? So that's going to be a chord. And this this one. Right. So it's pretty kind of uh, easy to identify. Uh, I'm going to go and maybe just maybe do it like this. Uh, on this one, let me just go back and change it to the same C that we were doing. And I'm going to make uh, this one a uh, chord. I'm going to go there. I'm just going to edit. And I'm going to go do the same thing on the other ones. Right? I'm going to go there. So now we have it here. And then we have right here. Now remember, we have the other modes. It's going to be this one. So maybe this one, and I'm going to stop it. And when you stop it, of course, it's going to be a little bit easier to edit. I'm going to go to the ARP. So now this one is going to be on ARP. Now, if I uh, go out of this mode, you don't need to. But uh, if you go right here without recording a motion sequence, you just can change whatever it is that you want to do in this case, which is rise and fall, or maybe a rise, or whatever it is that you're doing. 
Of course, since you are doing, uh, you know, a court, this will attempt to go through that court and do an ARP. That's, you know, the whole point of all of this. So if I do something like that, and now I kind of made a mistake because I need to go to poly. Uh, we start right there. Now, notice that we don't get it. Now we kind of get something, right? We do get something on that step. And right now, the magic happens when you start, if you do, you want to do this, and notice it's going to the ARP at some point, it's going there. But the thing is that everything's super fast. Everything is kind of a super, super fast. So it, we don't have time to kind of a hear that ARP. So what you can do, you can go to edit mode, and when you go to the sequence edit, uh, not on that one, uh, you're gonna go right there on the ARP parameter. Right now we have the rate of 16, and then, you know, they have the gate time in that case, in this case, we want to change the rate. So this one is just going to make it go faster. So if I play it... Can you see the difference? Can you hear the difference? Since we are changing the rate, this one is going to be much faster. Of course, making the gate time of this one a bit longer will help a little bit. Now if I go lower, you're just going to get something like that. And you can create kind of a different... different... different sounds, just like combinating the modes, the voice modes, the ARPs, and chords. Right, so, pretty cool. Now, if I go back, maybe I'm gonna leave it in 32. Ah, maybe I'm gonna leave it right there. So you can do this all over the place and kind of a, get a really cool sound. Remember that on some, on some steps, we are doing on this one, this one, and this one, and this one, we are doing the chord mode. So what we can do, maybe I'm just gonna maybe uh, go right here and record something on that on the spot, which is gonna be, again, the chord mode. So uh, let me just kind of uh, go uh, right here. I'm gonna go there to this step. And again, it's just kind of hard for me. And I can do, I can change in this case, what's gonna be the chord mode. So we are doing minor, so that I'm gonna leave that one right there. But this one, I'm gonna make it a minor seven, just to do something else. And this one is gonna be, I don't know, whatever, a sus four, and then I'm gonna leave that one minor. So we can, of course, shift the this value that we have right here. Now everything is going to change because you can use different chords, you can use ARPs, and this is going to give you again a very cool sound. And the possibilities with the sequencer, a sequencer that was very simple and straightforward, now you know, kind of gross. And this is kind of a uh, like the definition of the synthesizer. It looks super simple and it seems simple, but then you start discovering little things. And, you know, little things that you can do on the settings and on the edit and all, you know, all over the place. And this just keeps, you know, the synthesizer keeps growing and growing and it's just, it just ke keeps getting better. Another, th another trick that you can do, you can go to the edit mode and when you go to the edit, uh, of course, you can change, not that one, uh, you can change the sequence parameters. Now, right now we are doing 16 and we know, but you can, of course, change the resolution. Remember that we, we can do this? So whenever you do this, of course, each step is going to be kind of a, a little bit longer. So if you're doing an ARP, it's just going to, it's just going to do it a little bit different. Right now we are in 116. And if I go... Notice that this one is just last longer. If I go to 1.4... Now, of course, everything is kind of a super slow because you're changing this, the resolution. But notice how this one sounds because it's just much longer now. You can still go much faster. <laughs> yeah. So the resolution is some, some kind of a, a very cool thing that you can use. Now, a lot of the patches that you can hear 
uh, you know, that you get when you buy the Sinjaja, you get default patches and you go through them, you're going to, you're going to hear uh, that they are really cool. They are really uh, creative and they are kind of uh, using all of this that we've been doing, changing the voice modes, uh, changing the resolution and doing different stuff, you know, just to get this, uh, this, this sound. And they, uh, you know, they're again, some of them are just very basic, but the creative ones, uh, yeah, they go, they change the resolution and they kind of swap the different voice modes just to get this combination of chords and ARPs and, you know, keys. Now, one more thing, if you go to the uh, sequence edit and you go right here, uh, you can just go to step number eight. Notice this one, right? This is, of course, the, se the sequence parameters, but this one is going to be all clear. Execute. Yeah, I'm going to go right there. And whenever we do right, there is no more anything. I'm going to go out there and just kind of, kind of go and play, do play. We have nothing. We just kind of erased everything. If I do shift undo, are we going to get it? Mm, not really. You know, we could have cleared everything. So in this case, the shift and, you know, the rest is just a little, kind of a, a little bit better. But the other one is just going to wipe it. So make sure, you know, you just use it uh, correctly. Okay, so that's it. That's the whole sequencer. Now, again, uh, at the end of the day, it's going to be up to you to create cool sequences. And it's about your creativity and using the uh, using the resolution and using the different modes just to get different, you know, different sounds. Now, I was going to record just the sequence to this video when I'm going to this guide, you know, this kind of a, this is the volume two. But I'm just going to make it a little bit longer and I'm going to show you some other cool, uh, cool things like the user oscillators. Okay, so now we're going to be talking about uh, the user oscillators. And for now, I'm just going to go maybe to, I don't know, the number one. So uh, w the, originally, this video was going to be about the sequencer, but I'm going to be expanding it a little bit more because, you know, we can. And I'm going to be talking about the user oscillators, how you can, you know, install them, how, you know, maybe you can use them. And I'm just going to try to expand what you can do with this. So, okay, so right now we know that we have the second one with the with the uh, non-user oscillators, just the multi-engine. But when we go right here, we get the one from factory, which is going to be uh, the waves one. And the waves the waves can do, you know, its own things. If you go to the shift, the shape, that's going to do something. If you go shift and shape, that's going to do something. And if you go to the configuration, it will do something else. Just like, you know, this one's the ones we have in the middle. Right. So what if I tell you that you can install user oscillators? That's why it's called user. You can install your own oscillators. So uh, what Korg did, they opened the SDK. And if you don't know what SDK is, uh, is like uh, the kind of the language of uh, building, you know, the oscillator for the multi-engine. For the prologue, the NTS1, and you know, all that sort of that. So, yeah, yeah, that's what you can do. You know what they did. So, some developers started to create their own oscillators so you can install them. So, we're going to do that right now. Now, first of all, uh, what you need to do, you need to install the librarian, is the software where you can control this by USB, you know, where you can uh, kind of a store. Let me just show you there. Uh, here it is, the, the librarian. So, you can install this. This will, of course, communicate with this and it will just kind of uh, recognize all your patches, all your programs, and you're going to be able to see them right here. You can even rename them from here so you don't have to go and do all the, you know, <laughs> all the scrolling right there. And then, of course, you will need to save it right here. And notice it says user oscillators, user modulations, delays, reverse, and microtunings. In this case, we are not going to be covering mi microtunings. But all of this is something that you can install. And notice that on user oscillators, we already have one which is called Waves. So, yeah, we can install more. So these oscillators uh, were made by third-party developers. They are not a, a Korg employees. They have no relationship to, uh, you know, uh, with Korg. So Korg is not responsible if you install something on your on your unit and it kind of, uh, I wouldn't say break it, but it will just kind of mess with the system, you know, with the software that is, what this one is running and it will restart the, the synthesizer over and over again. And that sucks because you will need to go and reset the, to factory setting just, just like I did. You know, we'll go back to factory setting. And that sucks because you're going to lose all everything that you did, maybe all your programs and everything else. But again, you know, it's a third party developer, so Core cannot control uh, everything that uh, other developers will do. And so what, you know, how can you, how can you install them? And how can you find them? So there is information all over the web. And uh, of course, you have a few places. I'm going to show you one. Some of them are paid and some of them are free. So I'm going to be taking you right here. This is one of my favorites and it's free. You know, he made free, free uh, oscillators and all this stuff as well, stuff as well that you can check. But right here, the first one is going to say plugging for core Glock SDK. And again, if you don't know what SDK is, kind of the language that this speaks. 
Uh, I'm not just guessing. I'm a software developer too, so um, you know I gotta know. So uh, right here, you can use this ones for Minilog, Prolog, and then NTS1. So yeah, you can install this for all of those three. So if you go right here, is will, it will tell you a lot of you know just it will give you a list of all the oscillators and effects that you can install as a user. And you know you get a lot, and all of them are free. Now of course. This dude, uh, if he's a, you know, a she or he, or it doesn't matter. Uh, it spent uh, quite a lot of time creating all of this. So you will need, of course, to donate. It's not required. You can still install them, you know, install the oscillators and use them. But, you know, if you can donate, maybe five bucks by him or her a coffee, uh, that would be nice. Because, again, developing something takes a lot of time. Just like making this video takes a lot of time. So if you want to buy me a coffee as well, you can. You have the PayPal at the bottom and you can go maybe to Patreon and support the channel. So that being said, I'm going to go maybe to this one, Super 2.0. And uh, notice and, and right here, you get a description of what this does. It's just Super Saw and it gives you a lot of other options and you will need to read them because all the user oscillators are not like the ones we have in the middle. The developer made something special for this oscillator. So when you go to shape, it is going to do something special. Maybe if you do shift and shape, it's going to do something else that you don't, you cannot do with the other ones. You know, the other ones are just, you know, different. And it's because the oscillator will behave in the way the developer uh, kind of uh, developed this, uh, you know, oscillator. And right here, when you download them, it will tell you what it can do. You know, the shape is going to do this. The shift shape is going to do that. And if you go uh, right here, you're going to get this waveforms. If you go to the uh, configuration, you can do some odd things. So again, you can do a lot of things. So, but depends on the oscillator that you install. Okay. Now, of course, you're going to need to install some of them. I've already downloaded this one. And the most famous from this developer is that one. And it's, I guess it's the chips. But all of them are great. The chips 2.0. I've already uh, kind of downloaded them. And again, I remember I've told you that I kind of uh, resetted everything to factory. So yeah, that's what I did. So I have nothing. So before you can do anything, before you can install install anything, since Quark will not be responsible if you mess it up, if uh, the developer, uh, will, of course, will not be responsible if you erased or you mess up your synthesizer and you need to do a, a factory reset, of course, you need to do a backup first. You need to back up everything that you have. You can do it with the librarian. And then, of course, once you're doing uh, done with the backup, then you can install. So, okay. So, how can we install? When you download the, uh, you know, the uh, oscillators or the effects in this case, notice that right here will give you the name. You're going to go right there, for example, chips. And it's going to tell you, okay, this one is the M -E -M -N -L, So, this is the mini lock. And the other one is going to say PL. This is the pro lock. And right here, they, the developer gives you information about this and some warnings and blah, blah, and so on. So you can need to read them, of course. So how can we install them? So first, make sure that when you go to user oscillators, you uh, receive all. This is going to make sure it's going to go right here at the bottom and load everything, all the oscillators that you have. Because if you don't load them and when you send uh, the oscillators, uh, the problem is that it will erase what you had and it's just going to put what you have right here. That's the problem. So you're going to need to receive all and then send all when you're ready. So, okay. So what do we do? We just need to drag and drop, right? So when you drop it right here, it's going to say chips 2.0. That's done. All right. So I'm going to go to the other one and this one is going to be the super and we're going to follow the same example. Just going to go drag and drop. This is going to go and it's done. Now, all of this is just in memory. You're not really installing this in your, uh, in your synthesizer. So how can you do? You go and you send all. So I'm going to go and send all. So of course, this is going to take a little bit of time. I guess it's just going to give me, oh, maybe it's already done. So how can you check it? Well, if you go to the users, or uh, to the, if you go to the user right here, notice that it says chips two, and then it says soup one, which is the super two. So that, that's it, you know, now you can use them and they will just, you know, different things. So also remember that you can install effects, you know, you get buckets, which is a bucket brigade style dual out of folk course. It's just fantastic. It gives you a lot of, a lot of tools that you can use. This is just going to expand what this synthesizer can do by far, by far. Okay. So, okay. Let's, let's just try to listen. Let's do something with this. All right, so I'm going to go maybe, I'm going to go to the super one. Why not? Because this one is really cool. And well, maybe I'm going to go to the default patch first. And then I'm going to go to user, just like that. And then maybe we're going to go to chips uh, and soup.
So notice that right now we just don't get anything. This one is going to be working on the multi engine, which is going to go up on that one and go down on the other oscillator. So we are just going to be listening to the multi engine. And notice how this sounds already. Now remember that you can mess with the shape and this is just going to change what it does. So they are very specific oscillators. You just need to read the documentation. So notice that we get that super saw. That's why it's all, it's called soup. Now also remember that the shift and the shape will do something. Notice it sounds very different right now. And again, this sounds great. You know, it's just one single oscillator. Now, all the uh, user oscillators, they can do very specific things. So when you go to the edit mode and you go to the program edit, uh, you are going to need to go and just find the configuration for the multi-engine. Remember, it's right here. And notice that when you change oscillators, maybe this, this one is the multi-engine. And we kind of already know this once from the first uh, guide. And we know that we can change this one, but the user oscillators, they do different things. And notice that you don't have the same options. So you can do everything what the, you know, what the developer told you, that tells you on the documentation, what you can do. This one is going to be adding notes. And of course, I'm not going to go through all of them. You're going to need to read the documentation, but again, we have different waveforms and, you know, a lot of our other options. So if I go to the chips too, uh, this one again will have different options. So all the, the user oscillators will do different things. Uh, same as with the effects, you're going to need to read it and see what you can do with them to figure this out. But you know that you can do get something with the shift in the shape and the shape. And then when you go to the multi-engine configuration, you can get even more out of this, you know, by doing, you know, whatever you can do right here on each oscillator. You have a lot of waveforms, a lot of sounds on the multi-engine, and then you can combine them with the, you know, the analog, and you have a combination of all of this, and the sound possibilities are a lot. So this is just a great synth if you're starting, fantastic. If you're not starting, it's just fantastic. And if you, of course, you're an advanced user, this is just fantastic. It's just going to give you a lot of tools. I could just make a whole record just with this synthesizer. Just like the DeepMind 12, for example, just one of those synths uh, where you can do a million things. It will cover a lot of ground. Well, this is just one example. It is a synth that can cover a lot of ground. Okay, so let me show you one more thing. Uh, this is just a fantastic thing that I use the whole time. And no one is paying me for this. Just before we start, you know, no one is paying me for, to do this. Uh, not even, you know, Korg is not paying me. Sunny Sins, which is what the, what I'm going to be talking about. Uh, it's not paying me. No one's paying me. I'm just telling you this because it's good information and it's just going to make your life better with this synthesizer. So, of course, you can use the librarian to uh, kind of, uh, you know, store the patches and, you know, store them back and do the backup and install the user oscillators and do all of this. Now, you have all the options or maybe one option and it's going to be from Cinesins. This is again a third-party developer and this uh, dude or maybe he's a, it's a he or she, I really don't know, uh, he or she creates different things like patch mappers, for example, for the Verringer uh, K2, let's say, just to give you an example, uh, for this for this synth, of course, you cannot save uh, patches because it's an analog synth, of course, but you cannot, you know, store patches. That's, you know, that's how it works. Uh, so uh, right here, what you can do, you can, of course, buy it and you can install it and you have a VST where you just can, of course, save your patches and then save them in, save it in your computer or even you can save it in your DAW. So it's just a great thing. I have a lot of this ones. So this is not what I want to show you. I want to show you the if you go to full editors, you have something that says core prolog and core mini log XD. So what this is, this is is an uh, editor or uh, an editor and librarian at the same time. So this is what we can do. You can communicate with your synth and you can control it, uh, you know, like a like a plugin, like a VST. And this is just going to make a, a lot, make your life a lot easier to change parameters you have on the edit mode, for example. That you need to, you know, go to edit, go tap, 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 and then change something. So this is going to help you to, you know, do all of that without doing, you know, the deep diving, you know, menu diving. So let me just show you, I of course have it and I use it the whole time. And again, no one is paying me to do this. So if I go right here, notice that it's going to give you, uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be this one. So once you have it connected, 
This one, what it can do, and in this case, if I go to a default patch, whatever, it doesn't matter. This one, it's going to connect, of course, with your synthesizer. It's already connected by MIDI and everything else. So if I maybe let's play something and I change the cutoff, notice it's recognizing and changing the cutoff. And if I go and drag it with the mouse or just maybe change it with the mouse, this is just gonna apply the changes. Maybe to go down on the oscillators and so on and so on. So you can use it as a VST, to, as a controller, uh, as a VST for your synthesizer. And you have a standalone version and you have a, you know, a plug-in version. So you can maybe use it on your DAW session and control it from there. Just a fantastic thing. So not only you can just, you know, mess with, mess with the values, you have a lot of information about what the patch, the program that you're just, you know, uh, using, uh, like, you know, the configuration, some details, you can store this on your computer. Uh, if you go, for example, to bank management, you have, you can, you have the three or maybe two different banks, you can load and create banks. So you can store them in your computer and just maybe load the, the preset that you have on some part on your computer on the fly. And it's just going to be loading load right here. You can load the patches from the mini log. So again, it's just a fantastic thing to have. It's just going to make your life easier in terms of surf saving patches, in terms of creating patches and everything else. So why do I, why am I getting, you know, if why am I bothering giving you this recommendation, you know, maybe to use this? And maybe you're saying, dude, but I like to move the knobs. This is, you know, I like, this is why I have the hardware synth. And me too, you know, I like, uh, you know, interacting with the knobs and, you know, having a very kind of an analog kind of a vibe. I really love that. But sometimes you just need to uh, work or do something or, you know, do whatever it is that you do and you need to work fast. And that's the first reason, right? You need to work fast. So maybe you're making a track and you want to do things fast. So the software, the VST is just going to help you. Why? Well, maybe let's say that I we I want to go to the multi-engine. I want to do a few things and I want to create a few patches. Well, you're going to need to go to edit. Then you're going to need to go to tap. And then you're going to need to scroll, scroll and tap, tap, tap to get where you want to be. And at the end of the day, this is, of course, a lot of steps. You can easily go to the software and change them from here, right? Just much quicker and easier. And the second thing, the second benefit is that, of course, if you do this a lot, at some point, this button, this button, or this one, it's just going to break. It's just going to break. So with the knobs, uh, it's just, if you break this, it's, it's replaceable. But sometimes, you know, replacing this or replacing this is just a little bit difficult. Um, sometimes, you know, not always. So, yeah, again, this is just going to expand the, the, the life uh, of your synthesizer. That's why I use it. And this is why I'm giving you my recommendation. You know, you just can handle it as a VST and avoid doing the menu diving. You can work fast. You can manage your libraries and your presets on your computer and do whatever it is that you want to do right here. And again, mess with the configurations directly. So again, this is just a fantastic thing to have. All right, so that's it, you know, that's uh, my final advice. Now, if you like this series of videos, remember, of course, to like, to subscribe. At the bottom, you have uh, a link to PayPal. If you want to buy me a coffee, you can. You can also go to Patreon and you can maybe be a one month month patron and you're gonna get some downloads in return. Like, uh, for example, you know, maybe early access to videos I do uh, before they release to YouTube and some other things like uh, presets for different things. I'm creating one for Clark. It's going to be my personal collection. And maybe you're going to be uh, <laughs> seeing them right here. You know, I have it right here. So I'm going to give you that. Why not? So yeah, if you appreciate what I do and you would like to maybe buy me a coffee, you can do it on Patreon or on PayPal, of course. And if you like to add comments, please add them. And this is how I know you will like this series of videos, because if no one likes this and no one is watching and no one is adding any comments, why recording this, right? Makes no sense. So maybe if you'd like to add a comment, I love reading comments. So please add a comment. All right. So see you on the next one.